Hello folks, today is Friday, September 9th, 2016. My name is Jake Baldino. I mean, that was an amazing time uh, working with Jake Baldino and uh, and everyone else there. Jake Baldino is a, a bad man. He's a rotten, Jake. rotten, awful dude. What? Scoville, come on, man. Uh, lick, lick my foot, you Hawaiian scarecrow. Um, anyway, we gotta talk about video games, starting off with the play- Was that too much? We gotta talk about the PlayStation 4 Pro. It has been announced. It is no longer the Neo. It is officially named the PlayStation 4 Pro. I hope you guys have seen the video we put out on it where we give you all the information about it. But basically, what this is is a somewhat 4K ready PlayStation 4 that can play games more powerfully and uh, it will work within the existing PlayStation ecosystem so no players get specifically alienated, which is cool. But this thing is still dividing a lot of players. It's just a weird thing. It's a tough sell, especially because at this presentation, Sony didn't really seem that jazzed about it. It was kind of boring. It seemed like all they kept talking about was 4K, which honestly, you have to see to believe. You can't be convinced of how good 4K or HDR, more specifically, is on a live stream. It just, it just doesn't work that way. Will the PlayStation 4 do well? I, I think so, but it also does that thing where it starts confusing the market. Casual people are going to be very confused by this, but on the flip side, also, I think the big deal here, especially for console gamers freaking out about this, is that they've never really been presented with a, a direct choice of them having a lesser product or a greater product product. Usually it's, you want the 360, you have the 360. That's it. You want the PlayStation 3, you have the PlayStation 3. That's it. PlayStation 4 Pro and then eventually Xbox One and Xbox One Scorpio kind of changed that. So people are freaking out and I think understandably so. Speaking of wrapping our heads around things though, uh, there's also been some weird uh, on the record statements by Sony representatives. Apparently uh, there was some speak about an HDR patch costing money because I don't know if you guys know this, but Sony did announce that every single PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Pro console will be updated, whether it's slim, the old console or otherwise, will be updated to be HDR capable, which is pretty sweet and is actually pretty cool considering Xbox One had to release the Xbox One S to have HDR. But the thing here though is that the developers on their side have to enable and update the games to be ready for HDR. Sony apparently didn't shy away from saying that these updates could cost money and could, you know, technically be DLC. Thankfully though, while we were working on this video, this has actually been debunked. I think it's another example of, you know, a headline running wild. So I guess it's another example of don't always freak out and grab your pitchforks immediately. I guess. But back on the PS4 Pro, I've had a lot of people asking me, Jake, is it worth it? Should I go out and get it? Honestly, I, I don't know yet. It's just, it's a very weird thing that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Also, one other thing of note that did come out afterwards is that uh, sharing on your PlayStation 4 Pro will capture video at 1080p, 30 frames per second, which that doesn't sound very pro to me. On the flip side though, if you upload that stuff right to YouTube, that'll do 60 frames per second, but it's interesting that it can't really capture at a 4K resolution and at above 30 frames natively. That's a little weird. Like I said, this whole PlayStation 4 Pro thing, we have to figure it out as it goes along. Well, we see more in the wild. I think we'll have more answers on whether or not this is worth it? And I know while I'm talking about all this, all you PC guys are laughing. So uh, yeah, of course, I know, I understand. But another big surprise this week, Apple announced another iPhone. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, we always, that happens, cool. The big thing though was that uh, Nintendo was there and they were showing off Super Mario Run. Mario Run? Mario. Mario? Mario. Mario Mario. It's a me, Mario. It's a me, a Mario. Tomato potato. Mario, I'm from New York, that's how I say it. Super Mario Run is releasing first on iOS and eventually later on for Android this fall, and that's very interesting for Nintendo to make such a big push directly towards mobile with one of their big properties. You know, they've dicked around with Mitomo and stuff like that, but Super Mario Run is the real deal here. I say real deal though, I don't really know, like it looks like it animates and, and jumps really cool, but basically it's it's a runner, it's a fucking endless runner. Like, you, you can play it with one hand. That's, okay, cool, great, I guess. Also, I don't know if anybody still plays Pokemon Go anymore. I'm really sorry. I know we talked about it a lot. I don't play it anymore, but you're going to be able to get Pokemon Go stuff on your Apple Watch if that's a thing. 17 years ago today, the greatest console of all time launched. Dreamcast? Yep. Raise one and raise one for our boy. Also, like everything I talk about, there's a link below to check it out. Uh, something I linked for you guys was an interview with Bethesda head Pete Hines that had some very interesting things to say about how they approach graphics in games, specifically the next Elder Scrolls game. This was actually a really good interview where the interviewer actually didn't pull any punches and uh, they asked him about how people, you know, reacting to, oh, Skyrim Remastered doesn't really look that great. So he explained his approach on how they look at games and how they want them to look as good as possible and they're going to make Elder Scrolls as good as possible, uh, but only within the ramifications of what they can really do in the game world. What they can actually do and accomplish with all the intricate moving parts in their games is more important than the actual graphic fidelity. But speaking of Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and Bethesda news, the bigger bomb that dropped was Bethesda announcing that 
It looks like Fallout 4 isn't getting that mod support on PlayStation 4, and neither is the upcoming Skyrim Remastered, simply because Sony won't let them. Mm. Apparently between Bethesda and Sony, there's some disparity on how they want this thing to work, and Sony just basically won't have it. So that led Bethesda to actually just come out and say, sorry guys, for now, Sony isn't letting us do it the way we want to. So we'll keep you updated, but for now it's not happening. And that sucks so much, especially because one of the most asked questions I get on Twitter and Facebook is, hey Jake, any word on Fallout mods for PlayStation? And people have been asking and asking and waiting and taking every little nugget of information, and now ultimately it's not happening? Damn. It's the worst. I think ultimately with this coming out, I know we're talking about Sony a lot this week, but it seems like a very difficult uh, PR week for Sony because they have to convince people about this PlayStation Pro that costs a ton of money, uh, not to mention the PlayStation VR, and then all these statements coming out about the PlayStation Pro. And then now you get Bethesda coming out and saying that Sony's a dick and not letting them do mods. It's like uh, Sony is like teetering that line where everybody loved them for a while and they could easily fuck that up. It's funny how quickly things change. And since we are talking about that, I really love that after the PlayStation Pro announcement, uh, Microsoft tweeted this. That was great. It's like ultimate tweet smackdown. And for you PC guys, I don't know if you missed this, but the Dolphin GameCube emulator got a full update that basically gives it full compatibility. That means most of the GameCube games you've been trying to get to run on that thing will now finally run. So that means for me, Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, here I come. Also another small thing that almost like slipped past my radar, but apparently in Europe, Destroy All Humans got rated for PlayStation 4, meaning I guess there's an incoming Destroy All Humans version for PlayStation 4, which is really exciting because I love that game so much. I'm like actually like, ugh. I'm like talking so, I'm like talking so much, there's like saliva coming out of my mouth. Also, I'm sure you probably saw more Red Dead Redemption rumors floating around, whether it's a remastered version or a new game or whatever. Uh, there's been a lot of things in the air, but the newest thing was a translated Korean game site that had reported on a rumor that a fully remastered version of the game would get released on PC and PlayStation 4, which sounds kind of weird. They also said that it was going to be announced at the Sony PlayStation 4 Pro event, and clearly that didn't happen, so I guess we could throw this rumor in the garbage. But seriously, Though, if any of you guys do have an Xbox One, do yourself a favor, take advantage of that backwards compatibility. I've been playing it on Xbox One and it runs great and the game is still fucking really good. And we can't forget about Batman Return to Arkham, the game that was supposed to release this summer that was delayed indefinitely, which was bizarre, ended up getting a release date, October 18th. We got another trailer, but we also got like an official side-by-side -side comparison trailer showing a bunch of gameplay. And you know, this game has been scrutinized as a remaster a lot. People saying that it looks shittier now. And I gotta say, I, I don't think it does. I think it looks much, much better. But I think there are some questionable design choices, especially when it comes to uh, how they portray cutscenes and how the character designs work. Because we were looking at this one over in the, in the office specifically. Like, old Joker here looks way better than the newer remastered Joker. So it's ported to a newer engine and overall graphical quality I think does look better. I think there's just some questionable design decisions from the team that ported it over. But ultimately, I guess the moral of the story here is that you can't win on the internet. But speaking of winning things, what you can win is a free game from yours truly. Why am I talking like a game show host? All you gotta do to win a free game, there's a link below, you click it, you sign up, you enter once and then you're entered basically forever. And then every single week I close my eyes and randomly go in and choose one winner to win a free game of their choice. We're working on expanding it to uh, more places, but for now, this is how it is. The winner this week is... I'm gonna shield myself a little bit. If you haven't followed me on no, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram yet, you should probably do that. This weekend, I'm gonna give away uh, like a Steam, Xbox Live, or PSN gift card. Uh, so follow me on those things, and I'll be doing that over the weekend if you want more free shit. But we have to talk in the comments about what's going on this week. I really wanna hear, like, what's the deal with PS4 Pro? Like, wh what's the general mindset out there? Because I've been going through comments, but I still haven't gotten really a grip on how people really feel, especially actual PlayStation fans. So let me know how you feel about it, if you're gonna buy it. And I also wanna hear if you're one of the people that are just completely upset by the lack of mods in Fallout. That's a huge disappointment. But if you're a PC person, we gotta talk to you too, so let me know what you think of the Dolphin emulator, of what you've been playing on it. And of course, the return to Arkham debacle. How do you think the graphics really look? Let's talk about all that stuff down there. I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You guys know that. Uh, but you know the deal. Thank you guys so much for watching every single week. You guys know I'm here every Friday. Clicking the like button helps me out a ton, and we really appreciate it here. All of us. Right, boys? Hey. hey! Subscribing though is a good idea if you're new because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me. That was stupid. That was so bad.